Welcome back to our Alaskan adventure. We've been exploring Alaska for two weeks now and have been mostly sticking to the lesser known or even forgotten trails in its backcountry. We've overcome unexpected illnesses and pushed on to see some incredible places and wildlife. Today, we've returned to a familiar road in the northernmost reaches of Alaska, the Dalton Highway, for our second trip along its 414 mile long stretch of dirt and frost heaved pavement. While our first drive up the Dalton in 2018 was a wet, cold, and slightly underwhelming experience with its landscape shrouded in clouds and mist, this time around, we've been greeted with loads of sunshine and incredible views. And if that's not enough, we even kicked things off with a wolf pup sighting within the first few miles, so our spirits were high as we made our way along one of the most famous roads in the North Country. So ride along as we explore the infamous Dalton Highway. So I can come up and get the tent ready. How'd you sleep? Yeah. Yeah? Good. Good. All right, well, good morning, folks. We're packed down, ready to roll. Amazing sleep last night, and surprisingly, woke up to this bluebird day here along the Dalton Highway, which doesn't happen very often, so. Time to get on the trail, see what we can get into. It's already off to an awesome start though. Let's roll. miles north of Fairbanks, we crossed over the Arctic Circle for the third time in our overlanding career. There are only two roads in North America that go this far north, one in Canada, called the Dempster Highway, leading to Tuktiuktuk on the shores of the Arctic Ocean, and this one, ending at Dead Horse, 299 miles further north. There are very few roads in the world that cross this latitude, and we plan to one day travel as many of them as possible. Sadly, our plans to cross over in Norway were derailed in 2020 when the pandemic halted our international travels. But for now, we're excited to be here again in the Arctic, and it only gets us more motivated for future adventures north of the circle. Not long after our photo op, we were greeted by a very healthy bull moose making his way along the marshy areas of the tundra. Finally nice. a bull moose. Nice. Waterfowl is also abundant here, with millions of ducks, geese, and swans migrating here every spring to raise their young in the myriads of puddles, ponds, and lakes before heading south again flying sometimes thousands of miles to their wintering grounds in the lower 48, Mexico, Central America, and even the Hawaiian Islands. The next few miles were a reminder that even the tundra is not immune to fire. This area was apparently scorched due to a lightning strike just a few weeks before we arrived, but thankfully it was mostly extinguished for our visit. Do it. 
After a few hours of travel, we arrived at Coldfoot Camp to top off our fuel and partake of one of the best hamburgers north of the Arctic Circle. Founded in 1898 when thousands of eager prospectors arrived here due to rumors of nearby gold finds, Slate Creek, as it was originally named, quickly sprung up and boasted a gambling hall, two roadhouses, seven saloons, and um, all the amenities that environment implies. But the town was later moved in 1912 to Wiseman, 13 miles away, when new gold discoveries drew away the miners. It briefly boomed again in the 1970s during the pipeline construction but quickly became a ghost town until Iditarod champion Dick Mackey set up a hamburger stand in an old school bus for the truckers moving supplies along the haul road. Over time, the truckers began to help build a more permanent structure by dropping off extra materials and hammering a few nails after having their delicious hamburger. Over time, a proper building was completed, and now this halfway mark between Fairbanks and Dead Horse is the perfect stopping point for weary, hungry travelers. <laughs> How's that? There's a mountain now. <laughs> hey! <laughs> Just across the street is the gates of the Arctic Visitor Center, where you can get an educational look at the Arctic tundra, its wildlife, history, and intense weather swings. This is definitely a must-stop visit on the Dalton Highway. Mm -hmm. Cloudberries. With our tank full of dead dinosaurs and our bellies topped off with a perfectly cooked burger, chicken fingers, and hand cut french fries, we were ready for the next section of the journey. And probably our favorite stretch up and over Adigan Pass to the North Slope. My home is not a highway. A straight road to follow on well known lone pavements I roam through wide open space with no maps or foot. No turn back. I'm in deep. I'm still out here and I'm still moving along. Still wondering. I'm still.
if this is being lost, then may I never be found. With our traverse of the past completed, it was time to make camp in one of our favorite places in the world, Galbraith Lake. While its altitude and latitude make it a chilly stop no matter the time of the year, we've paused here because this is a sentimental stop for us to revisit a magical moment from 2018 when we first traveled this road. Thank you. Special delivery. Thank you. You're welcome. Oh wait. I forgot to pay you. Oh. There. Thanks. You're welcome. <laughs> Alright folks, well welcome to camp yet again. Another long day. Not as long <laughs> as the previous days. I think the last one before this was 11 and a half hours on trail. Today, only about 8. So, yeah kickbacked and relaxed today. Hot. Mostly kicked COVID's booty, but we're still feeling the effects a little bit, so some hot echinacea tea while we enjoy the view. The girls hunkered back in there. Caroline's working on her junior ranger badge for the gates of the Arctic, so I'm not going to interrupt that. Hopefully we can swing by the visitor center and snag that puppy on the way south. But first, you know, northbound. Northbound the dead horse. I guess let's get a little bit of sleep. I don't think we're going to cook. <laughs> the hamburger and chicken fingers are sticking with pretty good. So maybe a little snacky poo and then nappy poo before heading north. Oh, and just a side note, I actually got to meet a Lifestyle Overland fan who's camping right over there. What's the odds, right? Great talking to you, Troy. Hope you enjoy the rest of your trip as well. Maybe we'll see you in Montana one day. But what a place. What a place. You guys remember this? How about a little uh, B-roll montage from this spot four years ago? You having fun? Yeah. You want to take some video of me holding, holding up the camera and watching me run? Go for it. Good job. How many does I have? That was like five seconds. It is January 3rd. No, just kidding. It's actually August 7th. <laughs> 